So our project is number 141 entitled Camera Eye, and today we hope to give you a comprehensive look into our final design selection, as well as our testing procedure and results. Next slide, please. Our team consists of myself, Katie, Nicholas, Pauline, Sean, as well as Matthew. Next slide, please. Just a disclaimer before we get started, we are not professional engineers and this design should not actually be implemented without the oversight of an actual professional engineer um, for professional and legal purposes. Next slide. Before we get started, just a quick overview of our presentation. We're gonna begin with the project background um, and then go into a description of our alternative designs as well as our final design selection. We'll present to you our main claim and then follow that up with our five subclaims and then wrap everything up with a conclusion. Next slide. Just a little bit about our project. Our client's name is John Photo. He is legally blind, meaning he has no vision in his right eye and he has very blurry vision in his left eye. He's used vision aids in the past, such as eSight and New Eyes, which are pictured on the right. Um, he had issues with the, these designs as they did not specifically address his visual limitations and he found that they were too clunky and bulky on his head. So he requested a, a custom design for us that would suit his limitations and would only be used during conversations, work meetings, and occasionally outdoors. Next slide. Our main claim to you today is that our design that we have selected is the most feasible design that is best suited for our client. And during our measures of success testing, it had exceeded and or met our expectations. Next slide. The two alternative designs we had before our final design selection were the super mad gaze as well as the Apple wrist cam. The super mad gaze combines an existing, um, an existing VR uh, sunglasses headset named mad gaze as well as the client's current smartphone. Um, the mad gaze has a camera built into it on the front which captures the environment and presents the image on two screens in the lenses and uses the smartphone as a source of power. Um, the Magaze was originally designed for virtual reality, so images are displayed three meters away from the user. Um, this would be an issue since our client can only see about three inches in front of him. The wrist cam uses a, the AWC glasses uses a wrist cam as well as um, an Apple Watch in the lenses. The wrist cam would capture the environment and then the images would be displayed on the Apple Watch lens in the left lens. The main disadvantages with this design are the cost of the design and that the Apple Watch comes with a lot of features that do not relate to our design at all. Next slide. So the description of the final design. Our team's proposed conceptual design is the Sudroid glasses. The custom built device will become comprised of the mini Sudroid smartphone, a UB size phone bracket, and a custom designed 3D printed glasses frame that can be seen in the photos shown. The phone bracket is to hold the smartphone in place, ensuring that the Sudroid phone is firmly secured onto the glasses. The client is able to remove the Sudroid phone from the design when it needs to be charged. The UB sized bracket will be fitted with threaded inserts on both ends in order to easily screw this component onto the frame. The phone and the phone bracket will be positioned where the white rectangular prism is located as shown with the glasses frame mockup. The 3D printed frame will be the exterior components of the design, while the camera and bracket will be the interior components. Together, the client is able to wear this functioning device. Next slide. Here we determine the mass and the dim dimensions of the device. To estimate the mass of the device, we use the density of the material and the volume of the 3D printed frames. The density of standard 3D printing resin is 1.2 grams per centimeter cubed, and the volume of our frame is 1.069 times 10 to the power of 4 millimeters cubed. Calculating the mass of the 3D printed frames, we get a mass of 12.828 grams. By adding the mass of the phone, which is 62 grams, and the bracket, which is 9.36 grams, we get a total of 84.188 grams. Because this is a prototype, the mass of this estimated design does not accurately describe the mass of the final product. To calculate the dimensions of the device, the team simply created a visually representation of the device and calculated its length, height, and width. The, the, the dimensions of the phone is the bracket that will be attached to the 3D printed frame and has a length of 103 millimeters, a width of 45 millimeters, and a height of 24 millimeters. This is then attached to the 3D printed frame. 
The final width of the device will be 16 centimeters while having a length of 15 centimeters. The phone and bracket device will be inserted into the frame so the outside dimensions are not affected by the phone and the bracket dimensions. Next slide. The Sudroid Glass's battery life is excellent in exceeding our design objectives. While the Sudroid phone manufacturer states that the phone has a battery life of five hours under maximum continuous use, we tested the battery life empirically to verify the battery life according to our measures of success. We determined the Sudroid Glass's battery life to be four hours and 35 minutes, and this battery life far exceeds our objective uh, battery life of over one hour, making the Sudroid an excellent solution while the measured battery life of 4 hours and 35 minutes does not make our solution better than our alternative designs, which both have an estimated battery life of around 5 hours, an empirical battery life of 4 hours and 35 minutes is more than sufficient for our client because he stated that he typically only needs to use the glasses for periods of 45 minutes to 1 hour at a time. Next slide. To measure the battery life of the device, we purchased the Sudroid phone and conducted repeated tests to measure how long the phone could run. And to simulate real-time performance, I set the phone's brightness level to maximum, turned on the camera app, clipped the phone to my glasses, and wore them for the entire duration of the tests. The phone was clipped to my glasses during the tests to prevent the phone from going to sleep due to inactivity, as the phone goes to sleep automatically if the camera app is open but left idle. Clipping the phone onto my glasses is also more realistic in simulating the battery life because the client will also wear the device as glasses. Additionally, since I could always see the phone screen, I was able to accurately time when the phone's battery life ran out. Next slide. I timed the duration between turning on the phone and the phone running out of battery. The test was conducted on three occasions in different environments and light levels to ensure that the battery life tests gave us data that was representative of various use case conditions. The first test was conducted indoors starting at noon. The second test was conducted outdoors starting at 1 p.m. And the third test was conducted outdoors starting at 8 p.m. After averaging out the battery life test times, we determined the Sudroid Glass's battery life to be around 4 hours and 35 minutes, which is excellent in regards to exceeding our client's expectations. Next slide. So I'm going to talk about the 3D design process. So in order to manufacture this custom component, I used a software suite called Fusion 360, and this is a digital 3D rendering suite, which allows you to design different components. So the way I created this one was I broke it down into different body parts. So as you can see in the first screenshot on the left-hand side, there's a list of different files with icons in front of them. Each of those icons represents a different component of the fully assembled model you see in front of you. So each of the glasses arms is a supporting uh, structure. And then in front of it's a small block. Between the arm and that block is a bracket, which will allow the glasses to open and close, similar to how a door would work, or regular glasses. And on the opposite side, you can see that same block is significantly extruded. This is in order to center the phone in front of his left eye. If this was not included, it would be centered between both of his eyes, which is not viable because he only can see out of his left eye. So that's why that side is larger and the other side is smaller. Uh, below that, there's two different 3D renderings. And this is also using another service that Fusion 360 provides, which allows you to 3D render material. In this image, I used um, aluminum as a material because using a plastic, which we actually printed that, is not viable due to the high brightness produced by the screen. I modeled the screen as a box of light, so it shows an accurate representation or a somewhat accurate representation of what it would look like when the screen is on. Next slide. I also conducted a center of mass test, which is a, a program you can apply in Fusion 360, where you analyze all the bodies in an object, which is the glasses over here and then it finds the center of mass. So the first dot you can see is approximately in the middle. This is including the phone. So this means that the majority of the glasses um, weight will be placed on that point, which rests on the nose of the, of the bridge of the nose. And if we were to include a second battery pack, which was an option before, it would be slightly off center. So this would be something we have to consider. Uh, we cannot test this right now in person due to COVID restrictions. However, after the restrictions are lighter, and we have the opportunity to, we can design using iteration until railroad prototypes, a glasses model that would have a center of mass further back, which would mean that it would not fall off of its face. Uh, in this slide over here, the, the next slide, you can see 
there's a 3D printer prototype, which I printed and ordered at my hall. Next slide. Next, I'm going to talk about our subclan D, which is the visual acuity test. When the client receives the prototype of our design, we need to know how much it improves his vision. Due to the COVID, we cannot help the client do the test in person, so we modify the Snellen visual test. First, the client needs to wear the design, download the chart, and measure the length of the biggest letter E in the first line. Then multiply the length by 2.838 to get the distance. After he sits at that distance from the screen, he will be asked to read the letters from each row beginning at the top. The smallest row that can be read accurately indicates the visual acuity in that specific eye. When we have the data of his visual acuity with our design, we can determine, we can determine whether it helps him improve his vision. The client is legally blind, which means if he can see the lines better than 20 over 400, the design does help him. And if he can see the lines better than 20 over 70, which is the normal vision, it means our design is very successful. The next subclan explains why we chose the mini Android phone at the main part of the prototype. Our team has considered many other choices, such as dash camera, police camera, Apple Watch, and parts bought from DigiKey. However, they all have some problems and we could not solve them in a such short period. For example, we asked the customer service of Garmin dash camera, and he told us the screen would automatically turn off when you were not using it, and the UI overlays the display cannot be hidden. Therefore, the mini form is the best choice so far, since it does not require any software development, which significantly reduces the time and cost of our design. Also, it has small size and lightweight, which meet our objectives. In summary, by purchasing a Sudroid phone and using a 3D model, our team was able to make measurements and calculations for the measures of success. Through the data we have gathered from the measures of success, we are able to determine the battery life at different times of the day, the weight, and the visual acuity of our designs. We also ensured the designs are symmetrical and the weight is balanced. With the data we collected from the measures of success, we compared our three designs and determined whether it satisfied our objectives goals to decide on the final solution. From the test results, we see that the Sudroid has a favorable weight compared to the other designs as it is the lightest out of all three designs. However, the Apple Richcam has a longer battery life than the Sudroid, but this results in the cost, which was taken from the Putrid, being at a relatively high cost for the Apple Richcam compared to the Sudroid. Furthermore, the cost of the Sudroid exceeded our expectations as it is lower than the cost and the minimum value from the objective goal, which is $500. Moreover, the Sudroid's glasses development time and cost are the shortest out of all three alternative designs as it comes with pre-built, fully functional hardware and software. We have already purchased this phone, phone bracket and 3D printed parts, so all we have to do is put the components together mechanically. Through careful and educated decisions based on the data, our team can conclude that the Sudroid is a suitable design as the final solution. Next. In conclusion, we recommend the Sudroid design to address the client's need. Similar to other designs, the Sudroid satisfied the functions and constraints. However, it came on top compared to other designs when using the Pewchart and measures of success where the distinct factors that gave it a leading edge was cost and weight. As we conclude this project, our team is proud with the decisions made to propose the Sudroid as our solution for the client.